Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin and today we're going to be checking out the Acer, oh I should turn around that way I suppose for the <laughs> name, uh, Acer Nitro, this is the VN7 571G, the 15.6 inch model. Um, but before we get into this, let me just say, uh, please subscribe to my channel because the R9 285 vs 280X video will be coming up next. So you're definitely going to be wanting to watch that one. Now let's get into this one. Oh, as you can see, I didn't get a box with this one, so I apologize for that. We're not going to be able to have a look at box contents or anything like that, but we'll get into it nevertheless. So let's start with the exterior of this laptop, and as you may have already noticed, it does look quite bland. It is quite basic. Um, it's got this matte black finish with these kind of vertical lines uh, on the uh, top here. So yeah, it, it is quite basic. They have this kind of chrome plastic down here to try and maybe liven it up, and uh, the edges are tapered. So that looks good as well. It makes it look a lot more thin and it's a, a bit nicer to hold, I suppose, if you were picking it up. Um, but yeah, it does look pretty stock. So nothing too fancy here. Uh, Size-wise, it's coming in at uh, 257 millimeters long, 389 millimeters wide, and 24 millimeters thick. So it is relatively thin. Just decent. Um, in terms of I.O., around the front, we have a SD card reader. Uh, on the left, we just have a lock slot. On the back, we have absolutely nothing. And on the right-hand side, we have everything. So we have the AC input, gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, triple USB 3.0. That's always nice to see. And a combo audio jack. So in terms of I.O. it's quite nice, um, yeah, it's got everything on the right hand side which some people might think is a bit more usable. I'm not really sure why it is as it doesn't come with, it looks like it has, you know, like a CD or DVD or Blu-ray this side, but it's nothing. This, this just is nothing, it doesn't work, it's just plastic. So it kind of looks like it, but no, there's nothing there. So I don't know why, maybe uh, the option, but there's still quite a bit of room up the front here, so I'm not sure why they didn't put anything on the uh, left hand side. Now to specs. So it's uh, CPU is an Intel Core i7 4510U processor. That's the dual core, the two gigahertz base clock and turbo clock of 3.1 gigahertz. Whoops, there we go. Uh, RAM 16 gigabytes. This is a uh, two times eight gigabyte kit. Hard drives, it's got a 1 terabyte hard drive plus an 8 gigabyte SSD, so it is quite snappy. Um, that's always nice to see. As I've said previously, when they just use an HDD, no SSD, even a tiny one like that, it just makes it feel so sluggish. And this is good. You know, the, the OS is uh, on the SSD, so that's fine, and then everything else will just go on the HDD. Now, screen, it's a 15.6 15 inch IPS 1080p panel. LED, so that's quite nice. Graphics is a NVIDIA GeForce GT840M. That's a Maxwell-based GPU, 2 gigabytes of video memory, and it's kind of their uh, mid-range, apparently, for their mobile market. And uh, weight-wise, it's coming in at 2.5 kilograms. So we'll start off with what you see first, usually, the screen. And that's what you're going to be looking at. So, as I said before, it is IPS, which means you get good viewing angles. Definitely good viewing angles. No complaints there in terms of viewing angles. Um, it was good in terms of brightness, but I found the contrast to be just a little bit uh, dark. You know, it, it just... Yeah, everything seemed a bit darker than what it should be. Um, and the colors, even with everything turned up, uh, it just came out a little bit bluish. That's what I would say. So it's an okay screen. Brightness wise it did fine, but maybe the color reproduction is a little bit off. Now sound. Now it bounces back hard with sound, that's for sure. So there's four speakers and they're all on the underside. Um, but they were very, very good. 
A lot of problems that laptops have is they have very tinny sort of sound. Um, but the, it's not the case with this one at all. They can go very, very loud. It's probably the loudest speakers I've ever heard on a laptop. And uh, they're very full, deep sounds. Yeah, no complaints at all. I was listening to music on this, no problems. Um, it was fantastic for sound. So, keyboard was pretty good. Um, yeah, it's got the red backlighting, which is nice. Um, it does look good, and it especially looks good in low light scenarios. The layout is standard and good, because I like that layout um, with you know brightness and volume controls on the arrow keys. One thing that was a bit funny was the enter key is kind of conjoined with the key above it, so uh, with the backslash and that, so I thought that was a little bit strange, although it shouldn't really be a problem. Um, but to type on, it was just fine. Most laptops don't really have that good of keyboards, especially if you come from mechanical keyboards like me. But uh, for average Joe, it's going to do you just fine. I had no complaints typing on it. Um, nothing was a problem. The touchpad, however, was the worst touchpad I have ever used on a laptop, ever. I don't know what it is about it. It just feels sticky to use. Like, your finger doesn't slide smoothly on it. It kind of, like, stutters. Um, because it's quite sticky. Not only that, but getting gestures to work was just impossible, so uh, I don't know what was wrong with it. Clicking and stuff was fine, it's very clicky, um, I can't complain in that sense, but just to use itself, and it's just it's so inaccurate, you try to click things like an exit button on a browser or something like that, you always end up going past it or not enough, it just feels unpredictable, and I didn't like it at all. Now the webcam, pretty standard, I was fine for Skype calls and that, mic and that. It's uh, Skype certified, which I've never seen before on a sticker, and I thought that was bizarre, and I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, but it's there, so I suppose, great, it's Skype certified, fantastic. Now, performance. So, yeah, you're not going to be able to expect much out of it. Uh, in Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, I did the benchmark within that software, and it scored 374 marks, which is pretty uh, pretty average, pretty down there. I also did uh, Unigen Valley, the Extreme HD benchmark, which some people might say is a little bit unfair, but I run all the tests I do on that, and some laptops do very well on it. Uh, but this one only scored 6.6 .6 frames per second average. And, uh, yeah, so that's not very good. And in Heaven on DirectX 11, it scored, once again, that was everything maxed out, 6.6 uh, .6 frames per second average. So, not that good in terms of performance. With kind of um, low requirement games, such as uh, League of Legends, if you have the graphics set on, like, medium or something like that, it'll do you just fine. Um, so that's what I would say. I would only recommend it for low requirement games. Um, yeah, that, that's all it would really be good for, if I'm brutally honest. Uh, as far as heat goes, though, it was very good. Uh, in the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility uh, benchmark, it only went up to 65 degrees Celsius on the CPU, so that's very good. And the GPUs only went up to uh, about 56 to 57 degrees Celsius during uh, Valley and Heaven. So, very good in terms of temperatures, which is good to see, because a lot of laptops have trouble with thermal throttling um, and poor cooling performance. Noise-wise, it was very good as well. Um, even during those benchmarks, it wouldn't get that loud, and it, you know, it was fine. It was still pretty quiet. At idle, it's dead quiet. So, yeah, there's no real noise with it or any problems in that area. Now, battery life. This is a big one for people. So, with casual use, and by casual I mean things like web browsing or writing a document or things like that, uh, you're going to be looking about, you know, obviously it depends on, you know, your personal use, but you're looking about four and a half hours, which is pretty decent. Um, I'm not going to lie, though, that's decent enough for most people for casual use, maybe a little bit less. Uh, than what some people would like, but you know, I, I consider that at least a decent attempt. Uh, with gaming though, that's going to drop right back. Um, I'm not sure how far you would actually go with it. It's probably going to drop down to maybe two hours, uh, something like that. So yeah, it is going to drop it right down, but in saying that, you're probably going to be gaming with it plugged into the charger because you're going to need that battery boost 
um, and all the benchmarks and everything were done with it connected to the charger. So you are going to need that. Uh, however, yeah, the battery life I'd just say is decent. Now, software. It comes with Windows 8.1. Um, it, it also comes with a ton of uh, Acer pre-installed software, which would be good for those people that really like it. Personally, I didn't really think any of them were that decent to use, but there's some, some people out there that might find it useful. Um, it also comes with uh, some pre-installed McAfee software, some um, uh, internet security, and uh, some Dolby software, which will liven up the audio, which is probably why it, can it was quite good. In conclusion, uh, I don't really recommend this laptop. Uh, it seems like it's trying to do too many things, and that's what I don't like, because it doesn't do one thing exceptionally well. It's trying to be a thin and light laptop, while also being a gaming laptop, albeit an entry level one. But it just doesn't really do either. It's quite heavy, um, but it is relatively small, so I guess it's got that going for it. But as far as gaming goes, you're not going to be able to play any mainstream games, you know, like big, uh, you know, high requirement games on it. Which you some say could be expected at this price point, but still, uh, I, I'm not really that phased by it. It, it, it. Other things it does, such as, uh, you know, the touchpad and that, are things that casual users, you know, that aren't going to be gaming, would still be complaining about. However, it does do some things good. The screen is pretty decent, the keyboard's pretty good, and the sound is fantastic. But it is let down in quite a few other areas. So, uh, this one I'd probably give, say if it was out of 10, I'd probably give it, say, a 5 or 6 out of 10. And uh, honestly, for the price point it's coming in at, which is around 1500 New Zealand dollars, um, yeah, I probably just wouldn't recommend it that much. However, that is just my personal opinion, like always. Um, feel free to comment below and let me know what you think about it, if you've tried it or if you own it, and what you like or what you dislike about it. And uh, subscribe to Tech Showdown, like always, and like the video. And the R9 285 Showdown against the 280X will be coming up next video. So in the comments below also, tell me your prediction. Who is going to win? These are both the Asus Direct CU2 ones. So it's no, it's two, the same model against each other. Who do you think is going to win? The Direct CU2 280X or the Direct CU2 or Strix? R9 285. I thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.